McFarlane Toys has brought back the DC Superpowers line. And I know at the time that I'm making this video, that's not new information. In fact, these have been on store shelves for months now. I understand that this is old news, but you know what? When this line first launched, I was very excited about it. I got caught up in trying to find these figures and hunt them down before they suddenly just flooded every Walmart. And yet I still find myself wanting to talk about them. So that's what we're gonna do today. Superpowers figures with power action, each sold separately. There's no power to build. Squeeze them, they've got power action like Superman. And Batman. Here comes Hawkman. Watch out for Brainiac's power action. And each comes with a mini comic. The Superpowers Collection, Superman, Batman, Brainiac, Hawkman, and other figures with power action, each sold separately, new from Kenner. Hey guys, I am Pixel Dan, and yes, today I want to talk about the new Superpowers toy line, from McFarlane Toys. Now, for those of you who are not aware, this started as an original toy line back in 1984. DC Superpowers. This was my first superhero toy line that I personally had as a kid. I remember playing with many of these action figures when I was very, very young, uh, but still have very fond memories of them. And to this day, they still hold up as being probably one of the better of the vintage superhero action figure lines. Uh, it's got a lot of nostalgia tied to it, but there are a lot of fans of this particular style as well. In fact, the style from the Superpowers toy line, and when I mean style, I don't necessarily mean the style of the figures, but the brand itself, the logo, the colors, the card back. Well, all of that transitioned into tons of merchandising for DC Comics. Back in the 80s, this was the hot ticket. This was how you identified DC products. That superpowers name was everywhere. So it's often been looked at as one of the best vintage superhero toy lines of all time, and I definitely can't argue with that. They are really, really great toys. In fact, today, my superpowers figures are some of my favorites in my superhero collection. So you can see why me and probably many others were very intrigued when we found out that McFarlane Toys was bringing this line back. Now, this is interesting because McFarlane's been doing a lot with DC, and this is one of those things that makes you wonder is this just going to be a quick nostalgia grab or is this something that they're planning to go deep with? Give us new figures in that classic style that we all love. Well, let's go ahead and jump in and take a look at the first few figures that have hit store shelves. The line launched with three figures being Batman, Superman, and Darkseid. A pretty predictable trio there. Uh, but soon after, other figures started trickling into stores, such as Green Lantern, the Batman Who Laughs, which is a really interesting choice, and even The Flash. Now, when these first started trickling into stores, I, like many others, were really excited and were trying to track them down, uh, and they were pretty hard to find at first. It was one of those things that got me very excited online, which doesn't happen as often these days with toys, but the second I saw people posting pictures of these new superpowers, suddenly I'm driving all over looking at Walmarts trying to find these figures. I just really wanted to have these. And these are Walmart exclusive toys, which, eh, is what it is, I suppose. Uh, but suddenly, these things just started showing up in droves. So I've got my hands on the first few figures from the line. And as you can see, just looking at the packaging here, of course, these are inspired by the original Superpowers packaging. The logo is there, the colors are there. Uh, they even have the little blister cards off to the side with the artwork right alongside that. Now, these are inspired by the vintage line, but it's worth noting these are brand new figures. They're brand new takes. In fact, these three figures are inspired by different pieces of artwork than the original figures. I guess with maybe Maybe the exception of Superman, who is a bit of a classic looking Superman. But then we've got Batman, inspired by Jim Lee's art. And we've got Darkseid in his new 52 attire. I will say with the artwork on the packaging, that's the one part that isn't 
quite as good as I feel like it should be. And I totally understand what they're doing, right? Like they are using uh, artwork samples of the artist whose version they are using in action figure form. Like we have Jim Lee's Batman art. But the original Superpowers toy line was very uniform in feel. All that artwork was its own thing and it all felt like it was part of the same line. And one thing here is these don't feel like they match up. In fact, the artwork just doesn't look quite as pretty or as nice or as crisp on the packaging. Don't get me wrong, I think basing these designs on different artist's interpretation of the characters is a great idea. I just think the execution could be a little bit better with the artwork placement on the packaging. Otherwise, the packaging absolutely evokes that nostalgic feeling and it's pretty great. Another one that's really interesting, of course, is Batman Who Laughs, uh, being based on a modern story where Joker and Batman are essentially the same character. Uh, I honestly don't know a lot about this storyline, but I've seen this character uh, in a lot of merchandise over the years, and he really feels like the one figure here that breaks that superpowers mold. So it's gonna be interesting to look at him outside of the packaging. Now, as we're opening these up, I want to point your attention to the cape placement on figures like Superman and Batman. It's worth noting that they are not actually wearing their capes inside the packaging. For some reason, McFarlane chose to have the cape just tucked in behind the figure. And even more baffling, the cape is tied into the plastic tray inside with a little plastic piece there. Um, this little tie that's holding it in place goes straight through the cape which leaves a gaping hole in the cape. Oh, this is an awful, awful decision. I absolutely hate it because there's just a giant hole in both capes and it is very, very noticeable. While we're talking about the capes, they're also made of this silky type fabric uh, and it feels extra bulky on the ring that plugs onto the necks. And honestly, I don't like the feel of the capes very much. One thing I will say is that they made the capes longer on these figures. Uh, the superpowers ones were a bit shorter. They just kind of came down a little bit below the butt while these actually go almost down to the ankles. Uh, a little bit more comic accurate on the cape length, I guess. So I do appreciate that, but I don't really like the material very much and I really don't like the big giant hole in them. I hope the capes are something we can improve upon if this line's going to continue and we get more caped heroes. So let's take a look at these figures themselves. Now I mentioned that Superman has a much more classic feel uh, and that's true but he is wearing a different colored outfit as well. I already mentioned the longer cape but he's got darker blues uh, than that Superman in the original line which had that really light vibrant blue color in his uniform. Also, the head sculpt is really interesting because the head sculpts do feel a little bit more modern, right? They don't quite have that vintage feel to them, um, but the way they painted Superman's face is interesting because he just has two blue dots for his eyes. Now, I know exactly why they did that, and that's because the vintage superpower Superman had two blue dots for eyes. Something about that just stands out to me on this new figure. I don't hate it. It just stands out to me, so it's worth bringing up, I think. And this is a good place to also talk about the articulation on these guys because it's pretty much what you would expect for a superpowers figure with the heads just moving left and right, the arms moving up and down at the shoulders, and then the legs moving forwards and backwards at the hips with the knees bending. Uh, the joints all feel good and tight and solid. The knee joints specifically feel like they've got a real tightness to them. Um, there are no action features with these figures. And honestly, that's probably a good thing for most people. But again, the vintage superpower line uh, was known for having hidden mechanisms that triggered their action features that was like a whole gimmick of that line so a whole identity of superpowers has been removed with these figures i'll say i don't mind that i'm totally fine with these not having action features but there might be some purists out there who feel otherwise so Batman is supposed to be inspired by that Jim Lee artwork, though I will say the ears being so wide apart has more of a Frank Miller feel to me. Uh, he feels like he has no neck, but I think most of that comes from the big bulky cape that he's wearing there. Uh, his torso feels extra wide, I, and I didn't say that about Superman, but it's the same with him as well. However, I do love that Bat logo. I love the darker grays and blues here. Um, very, very different from the Batman we got in that vintage line who had those very bright 80s colors. Um, so this is a very different looking Batman when comparing to that. 
And then you've got Darkseid here. Now, Darkseid is the taller figure of the bunch. And it is worth noting that most of these figures do stand uh, just shy of a full five inches tall, while Darkseid's going to go a little bit above that. So he does tower over the other figures. But he is quite a bit different from the vintage Darkseid action figure. He feels more leaned out on this one. Uh, I do feel like they really did a good job of applying that new 52 costume look to this particular figure. And he feels hefty and chonky and really cool looking but um i don't know it almost feels like he doesn't feel quite as superpowers and i think this is where bringing in these different artist interpretations of these characters is going to uh have that feel to it because when you're applying it to the superpower style it almost doesn't always translate as feeling like a superpowers figure regardless i think he's a nice figure on his own he just almost doesn't have that superpowers feel to him I feel like I want to bring that right over to Batman Who Laughs because he continues that trend. Again, very nice looking figure. The colors look good, the sculpt is good, uh, but he uh, has a completely different feel to him. He's a little bit more leaned out, like the vintage Joker figure was, uh, but he still almost doesn't feel superpowers just because he's so different. And honestly, maybe that's just my own interpretation. Maybe that's just me looking at a modern character design and then my brain trying to like pair it with this vintage 80s action figure feel and sometimes that just doesn't compute but it, it, maybe it is just the way my own brain is interpreting things. Green Lantern's fantastic, and I love that we've got the Jon Stewart version of Green Lantern here. Uh, this makes sense because this is one of those things that makes this line uh, really cool, is when you feel like you can continue the vintage line by adding new characters. Uh, Green Lantern here is also the only figure in this wave that has an accessory because he does have the lantern that the figure can hold on to. So I do feel like that is another nitpick here is I wish we had a few more accessories here and there. Um, but the lantern is a nice touch and I'm glad it is included with GL here. The overall feel of these guys uh, is very retro. But when I look at the look of these guys, like the silhouette that they are displaying, they're not quite there. Um, specifically, I feel like the legs are a little too close together, especially on Superman. His legs are so straight and so close together, while the Vintage Superpowers figures all have this wide, heroic stance. Um, the arms are almost perfect, the way they've got that slight bend in the elbows and the closed fists. Um, maybe I'm getting a little nitpicky here, but Superpowers does have a very distinct look to the silhouette that they cast, and these McFarlane ones are close but they're not quite there yet. So the figures are pretty nice, honestly. And while I had several nitpicks there that I stand by, I still feel like the quality is pretty good on these. Like they feel solid, they, they don't feel cheaply made, they feel sturdy, and the paint is bright and colorful and clean for the most part. Um, so if you're into retro style toys, I do still think these are really nice action figures. But I gotta tell you guys, for me personally, where this line shines is with the vehicles. Because yes, my friends, they introduced two vehicles with this initial launch, being the Supermobile and the Batwing. Both of these come in boxes just like the vintage Superpowers vehicles did. These feel even more nostalgic than the card backs with the artwork. Everything about these is fantastic. And these vehicles are just killer. Let's start with the Supermobile, uh, which is just an incredible contraption here. Uh, just so you guys know, this wacky thing actually did appear in the comic books. So getting this as a toy is pretty great. And there was a Supermobile in the vintage line, but this is a different one. This is not the same Supermobile that we originally got. The construction on these feels very, very retro. I mean, very Kenner. Um, I feel like they are solid. There's good. They're quality made. The plastic feels good. The colors match decent. Like if I put them next to the vintage Supermobile, you can tell that it's not quite the same, uh, but it's pretty dang close. The overall design is really, really good. And there's some fun features going on with the Supermobile. First of all, if you push the S logo on the front, that opens up the canopy there. It triggers it open so that your figures can sit on the inside. 
We also have these little compartments that open up on the wings on the back side there. Um, and the funny thing about this is the box labels these as prison cells. There's even little bars on there, like in the S logo shape. Uh, but it's worth noting, uh, you are not gonna fit any of your action figures in this prison cell. I don't know why they're called prison cells. <laughs> you can maybe store accessories in there, but figures do not fit in there, unfortunately. Uh, it's a quite cramped fit if you're gonna try to put, especially dark side in prison there. But of course, the most fun feature of all is the weird boxing glove arms on there. There's a little turn dial on the bottom. And when you turn that dial, look at this, this, this punching feature back and forth, back and forth so that you can knock over your figures. Uh, I talked about action features being a big part of superpowers in the original line. It's really cool to see it incorporated with this vehicle here. And then we've got the Batwing. And again, it's another really, really fun vehicle. Now, I know a lot of us probably remember like the Kenner Batwing from the Batman movies. This one is quite a bit smaller, just a small little personal aircraft there. Uh, but I will say McFarlane did a great job with the color match on this thing, because if you look at it with some of the other retro vehicles like the Superpowers Batmobile, uh, the blues really do look like they match up and the vehicles look like they come from the same toy line, which is a really Really, really nice accomplishment there. Uh, same thing with the Supermobile. If you push the Bat logo on the front, the canopy shoots open. We've got stickers on the inside there. I mean, it's got just this total retro feel. I love that the steering wheel is the Bat insignia, so you can put your Batman figure in there. Um, the wings themselves can fold up. This is actually how it's in the box, so you can fold those down. And then there is a little trigger on the bottom that when you press, it does have the little claw clamp in the front, which again, is such a classic Batwing toy accessory or feature there. Um, so that way you can pick up your villains and carry them away and drop them, I guess, if that's something Batman wants to do. Um, I love these vehicles. The Supermobile and the Batwing alone are worth this line existing. And yes, they do fit in with your vintage Superpowers toys. So if you wanna put these with your vintage collection, man, they fit right in. I think it's worth noting too that the price point on these for a 2022 toy line uh, are really, really reasonable. With the figures themselves being around the $10 price point, the vehicles being around the $30 price point, I mean, even if the figures aren't a perfect uh, continuance of the vintage line, the price point alone is almost worth it to pick up a couple of them and check it out because, I mean, man, with the continued rising costs on everything these days, it's so hard to find a toy line that's cheap enough that you can feel okay about buying a couple just to try them out. And I really feel that way with this new Superpowers toy line. And as I mentioned, there's other figures that are on the way that we already know of. Uh, Flash is already out there. I haven't even found him yet, but we already know other figures are on the way like Wonder Woman and Reverse Flash and a few others. I mean, it really feels like McFarlane is going all in on these, at least right now. Um, so I'm anxious to see where this goes. I would also like to see if they're going to be making any improvements to any of the things I was a little nitpicky on. Uh, but for the most part, I'm, I'm glad this line exists. I know that we're in a point right now where there's tons of nostalgia Nostalgia, tons of retro toy line things. They really, really seem to be coming after us, right? They really do. Just like tugging on those uh, heartstrings and the things we loved as as children. But um, I don't know. Like when it's done well, I'm all for it. I totally appreciate it. And I think that the McFarland Superpowers line is absolutely on the right track. So I'm anxious to see what comes of it. Thank you guys so very much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed this uh, this look, this analysis of the new McFarlane Superpowers toy line. It's been out for a while, like I said. I'm kind of late to the game talking about it, so please feel free to tell me what you guys think of it. Shout out uh, down in the comments down there. Let me know what you think. Let me know if you're planning to buy more of these. Let me know what figures or vehicles you're looking forward to. Until next time, my friends.